Once upon a time, there was a game. A case study of some of the worst management in history. Grindy, buggy, messy. It was essentially six games bundled into one, without enough players to fill any of them. The Great Masters decided that the only move was to combine them. It took almost a year, but they did it. It wasn't perfect, but it was a massive improvement. But how do we bring in more players? Steam. Steam was the answer. Release your game on Steam and inject more players. And so they did. And they screwed that up. How could they screw that up, you ask? How badly would you have to screw up something as simple as putting your game on Steam? What kind of colossal disaster of decision making could cause this? What rejection of reason, what utterly moronic collapse of cognition could lead them to fuck up something as simple as releasing a free-to-play game on Steam? They charged money for the Steam version. <laughs> Hello and welcome, and if you're a subscriber, welcome back. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. An appetizer of greed that would give Steam users a nice little sampling of what sits behind that paywall. Come along with me, and I'll show you. Cosmetics? Well, of course a free-to-play game is going to charge for cosmetics. But this game charges for them harder than the American healthcare system. Swap the look at your soldier? That's about six bucks, please. Not bad, you say? Nuh uh uh That only covers one soldier, and there's usually five to seven soldiers in a squad. Oh, and by the way, you're gonna have at least three infantry squads. Possibly more, but three is the minimum, so that's like 20 soldiers. Six bucks each, please. Huh. You're on the new map, but you're wearing the default uniform again? Whoops. Those six dollar uniforms are only good for one set of maps. If you want to change your look on those other maps, that'll be another six bucks per soldier per battle zone. Money up front. This is like if whenever I bought a knife in CSGO, it only showed up when I was playing on the map Mirage or Nuke, and if I wanted the same skin to appear on the map's Overpass or Vertigo, then I'd have to fucking buy it again. Last year they added a feature you can jump out of the plane as a paratrooper. You could unlock them through an event- Oh, you missed the event. Well then the only way to get the paratroopers is to pay money. Don't worry though, comes with the best SMG in the game. Double the mag size of the one used by those filthy free-to-play plebs. But that would have meant mixing with the general public, and I don't... This is about as close as I ever... Hey guys, we're adding troop transports, just like you asked. You're definitely thinking of this iconic one from the movies. The one Darth Flo knows people wanted. You can have it. For money? Comes with a machine gun. Free one has no gun, of course. The description on Steam says you can have a tank and a plane. But really, you can only take one at a time. Unless you pay money. You want your tank not to be the default beige brown color? Money. You want to put a teddy bear on your tank? Well, you probably don't, but if you did, it cost you money. Business bad? Fuck you, pay me. Oh, you had a fire? Fuck you, pay me. And then, of course, there's the big one. You want to unlock everything for one of the factions? That's going to take hundreds of hours. No exaggeration. That number will be in the hundreds of hours. But. They'll double the speed which you research it, for money. And that's just to research them. You want to use them, you have to buy them. But if you want to buy them, you have to buy the ability to buy them. What is this? You're making me pay you to stand at the cash register? And that doesn't even go into the cost of upgrading them. Long story short, you're going to have nowhere near enough currency to use the things you unlock. And as a new player, you will pretty much always be short of silver. What are you crazy? I don't have that kind of money. Although, of course, you can always buy more of it. Once we suck at them in, we unload the dog shit. There's more, but if I were to list them all, this video would become a generational project. Just know that this game has basically every kind of microtransaction ever invented, as well as some that EA executives just fantasize about when jerking off. There is only one exception, though. This game doesn't have loot boxes. Oh, no, wait, they want to add those two. In this next section, I'm going to talk about the other non-monetization related issues because, oh boy, there's a lot to talk about. Here, we... No. No, you know what? Let's skip this. Forget everything else. Forget that the AI still doesn't work after three years. No, don't stand here. Go. 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 I'm mashing the button. Please go. 
Move. Move! They still need to add the feature where I can court-martial them for not following my fucking orders at all. Forget the fact that the STG-44 sounds like a stapler. Forget the fact that half the tanks in the game all use the exact same gun sound effect. You know what? Even forget the fact that the balance of this game is still pretty bad. Like if you unlock the Sherman II, you're now gonna have to fight the German Tiger II-H heavy tank. If you don't know much about tanks, let me put that into perspective for you. This is about as fair as a matchup between a 2009 Honda Civic and the German Tiger II-H heavy tank. All of that can be fixed. It's nothing. It's small potatoes. It's nothing when compared against the fact that this product is so filthy greedy that it's driving everybody away. Nobody wants to grind 100 hours just to get the Thompson SMG. Even if they pay money to cut that grind in half, it's still way too much. On top of having a monetization system so avaricious that Mr. Krabs wouldn't greenlight it, they wanted to charge Steam users $20 just to get in the door. And if you have an existing account and you just want to transfer over to Steam, well that's not free either, 20 bucks. The game is still free of course if you download it, but the Steam version costs 20 bucks. But M cubed, Darkflow supporters might say. Steam takes a cut of all sales, they gotta make their money back somehow. Yeah, yeah, Steam does take a cut. That's their business, that's how they make money. Developers get access to 100 million potential customers and in exchange they take a cut of the sales. Fair or not, if you want to be on the platform, that's the price you pay. You don't just push that price onto the customer and charge them 20 bucks for free to play because you want to recoup some of those costs. So could you pay me in advance? <laughs> or rather I should say it used to cost $20 because the Steam launch was such a disaster that they decided to pull a plug on it less than a day after it started. The Steam player base hit a peak attendance lower than a goth themed prom and what did they expect when they were charging money for a free to play game? We're sorry. I'm deeply sorry. Sorry. And then, that's it. You can only do a one launch day on Steam and that was it. Devs blew it and we'll never know how many thousands of players saw this new release and walked right past it because they saw the price tag and wisely moved on. The community had been telling them that this was a disastrous idea for weeks. The game needed more time, the monetization needed to be toned down, you shouldn't charge money for the Steam version, they don't listen. They're good at saying they're listening, but that doesn't count if you don't actually act on any of the feedback that you're getting. If Darkflow is going to save this project, I mean, if it even can be saved at this point, then it's going to need to completely overhaul this insanely greedy microtransaction filled tar pit of a game. It needs to completely overhaul its attitude towards the player, and it needs to develop some respect for the player's time and the player's money. I've tried my best to give feedback. The players, the content creators, the, the community managers that somehow haven't quit. But I think it's time we simplify the message because apparently it's too complicated. I want one message to permanently stagnate the entire Dark Flow office. I want it on your business cards. I want it spammed under every post regarding monetization this game ever puts up. I want it in all caps, giant letters, and a giant banner in the office. I want it tattooed on the forehead, arms, legs, and family jewels of every executive involved in making monetization decisions. One message. Enlisted is not War Thunder. The average War Thunder player will put up with anything. The average War Thunder player is a beaten dog who will never leave his owner no matter what. If the employees of Gaijin Entertainment drove a tank through his house, he'd complain about it on the subreddit and then renew his premium next time it went on sale. Because what, is he gonna go play tanky online? No, he doesn't really have a choice if he wants to play like a tank and vehicle game. If another major publisher put out a War Thunder style game with the same level of quality but not filled with microtransaction crap, then War Thunder would be gargling dirt six feet under in less than a month. People keep telling me, M cubed, the grind and monetization is not as bad as War Thunder. Yes, that's true. That's not enough. Enlisted is a first person shooter. This is a whole new league now. You're no longer existing without competition. Your competition is Apex Legends, Counter Strikes, The Finals. And guess what? In the finals, it doesn't take six weeks to unlock the FAMAS, and when I buy the fingerless gloves of Destiny or whatever for two bucks, I don't need to buy it again every time I want to put it on a new character or every time I swap to a new map. So yeah, this ain't worth under. If FPS players get bored of your game, they're gone like that. But M cubed. They increased the amount of silver you get from the daily reward and slightly decreased how expensive the cheapest upgrades are. Wow, really? 
They could quadruple my daily rewards, and the amount would be so small that if I embezzled it from my own account, accountants would never even spot it. Six months, and that's all the progress we've made in the economy, despite constant begging that silver is just way too rare? At this rate, the game's economy will be reasonable by 2065, and I don't even think we have another year left in us. Though, if you want another source of revenue, Darkflow, you really need it, then reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with some professors who will pay you 100 bucks for the rights to use your catastrophically bad management as a case study for future students to learn from. You want to know what the kicker about all this is? The worst part. The worst part is that under it all, Enlisted is a good game. A damn good game. It's a great game. I dare say it's an innovative game. I could make a video twice as long as any critical video setting just how it does an amazing job in so many different ways. I love that it's not afraid to try new weird things like paratroopers. Here's this weird gun that shoots fireballs that was apparently a real thing. It's not meta or anything, but it's cool. Here's a sword that's also a gun. I'd never heard of it before it enlisted, but it's pretty awesome that they put it in the game. I love how dynamic and evolving the gameplay is, and how all the different classes and vehicles interact with each other. Oh, you cheeky little fuckers, you. I love how you can get creative with your strategies. Here I used barricades to block this entire road for except for this little gap that a tank could drive through, and then I put an anti-tank mine on that spot. And it worked! A tank drove right through it! Even the goofy voice lines have a nice little charm to them, if I'm being honest. Like, just look at this April Fool's event they put together. It's insanely fun. This could be its own game. Well, it pretty much is. But everyone loves this mode, and there's barely any microtransactions in it. This shows what the team can accomplish when the developers are focused on making good, fun player experiences, and the executives aren't coming in and kneecapping the game because they want to squeeze a few more dollars out of the players. Enlisted could have been big. It could have been the next Hell Divers. It could have been the next big Smash success. It's that good. It's really damn good. And the developers have made large strides when it comes to planning and improving the game. In the last year, they've shown that they have direction, passion, they're planning things out more than one update in advance, the updates are no longer just aimlessly meandering around. They got their shit together, they sat down, they created a plan, and they really just crunched it out. And the resulting game could have been incredible. But it doesn't matter. There was too much greed. Greed killed it dead by nickel and diming, charging the player for every damn minute of their time, and it drove away everyone that wasn't a die-hard fan of this concept. Some people saw the enormous promise and decided to grind hundreds of hours and just stick it out, but that will never be everyone. The game in its current state will never capture enough players to make this project a success. The wrong people are steering the ship. I don't know or care if Darkflow or Gaijin are the ones who are responsible, it doesn't matter. The game is failing because someone's bad management and that's just the way it's going to stay until we see some real, serious change. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe or I will tell every employer in America that studies have shown productivity increases by over 40% when employees use a standing desk.